Hello, and welcome to this short video message summarizing Anglo-American Platinum's results for the 2018 financial year. I am pleased to be presenting a set of results that we are particularly proud of. I'd like to emphasize that safe production continues to underpin the way in which we strive to do business, and we achieved the lowest injury frequency rate on record. The total recordable case frequency rate improved 34% compared to last year. Tragically though, we still had two fatalities in the 2018 year, when Mr. Johannes Mayemela and Mr. Emmanuel Sakhali lost their lives following work-related fatalities. We have extended our condolences to the family and continue to offer support. Safe production is and must remain our focus, and we need to eliminate fatalities. Through a combination of improved operational performances across the portfolio and improved basket prices, we achieved in 2018 a 4% increase in PGM production, EBITDA growth of 21% to 14.5 billion Rand, Headline earnings were up 95% to 7.6 billion rand. And as a result, return on capital employed increased to 24%. And we moved to a net cash of 2.9 billion rand. That was from a net debt of 1.8 billion rand at the end of 2017. I'm pleased to announce that given our strong balance sheet, and greater confidence in the underlying cash generation ability of the business, we are increasing our dividend payout ratio from 30% to 40% of headline earnings. This equates to a H2 2018 declared cash dividend of 2 billion rand, or 7 rand 51 a share. In addition to delivering these strong operational and financial results, 2018 has been another very busy one for the business as we continue to look for value enhancing opportunities across the portfolio. During the year, we increased our ownership of Mototolo to 100%, completed the sales of Union Mine, BRPM, and our holdings in Royal Buffer King Platinum. Also in support of the strategy to develop the market for PGMs, we've launched the $200 million AP Venture Fund with the Public Investment Company. I mentioned the strong results were due to a combination of strong operational performances and improved basket prices. So let's look at 2018's operational performance now in a little more detail. Total PGM mined production was up 4% to 5.2 million ounces excluding Bacconi, which was placed on care and maintenance in 2017, total PGM production was actually up 6% on a like-for-like -like basis. With record PGM production from Machalaquena, up 7% to 1.1 million PGM ounces, and Unki up 16% to 193,000 ounces. A Mandelbult's turnaround continued, with PGM production 1% up, at 867,000 ounces. Total production from joint venture mines on a like-for-like -like basis increased 5% to 477,000 ounces. And purchase of concentrate ounces were up 13% to 2.3 million ounces. Whilst, as I mentioned earlier, the PGM mined production increased by 4%, the refined PGMs declined by 6% to 4.78 million ounces. The reduction was primarily attributable to the planned rebuilds of Mortimer and Polokwane smelters and the commissioning of the Unki smelter, all of which resulted in a buildup of work in progress inventory. Sales volumes of 5.2 million PGM ounces were 3% down on last year, owing to a lower refined production which was partially offset by a drawdown in refined inventory. Now let's look at how PGM basket prices contributed to the strong results. 
The US dollar basket price improved in 2018 with the palladium price reaching all-time highs in December. Rhodium, ruthenium and iridium prices were also very strong supporting the basket price with achieved basket price up 13%. The US dollar platinum price continued to decline with our achieved price dropping by 8% year on year due to negative sentiment and less exciting fundamentals all weighing on the price. The Rand exchange rate remains largely unchanged in 2018, which resulted in the Rand basket price also increasing by 13%. Looking ahead and to offer some guidance for 2019, the three major PGMs, platinum, palladium and rhodium, should all again be in a combined deficit in 2019. Primary mine production should remain flat, whilst tightening emissions regulations are likely to boost demand for palladium and rhodium in the light duty vehicle sector and platinum in the heavy duty sector. Platinum is expected to be in a modest surplus once again in 2019. PGM production guidance is 4.2 to 4.5 million ounces for 2019. Lower production versus 2018 reflects the fact that Sabanya Stillwater material is changing to a tolling contract from the 1st of January, and therefore refined metal is returned to Sabanya Stillwater. Refined production will be higher at 4.6 to 4.9 million PGM ounces. Refined production is higher than the mined production due to the build-up of work in progress inventory in 2018, which will now be processed in 2019. Sales volumes will be in line with the refined production. So what's next for Anglo-American Platinum? We will achieve our value proposition through the next phase of value delivery, which is divided into three main pillars as follows. Firstly, extracting the full potential from our operations through our people and innovation. Secondly, investing in our core portfolio that delivers industry leading cash flows and returns. And thirdly, investing in the development of the market for platinum group metals to increase demand. From the combination of achieving operational excellence through best in class performance, utilizing game changing technologies and disciplined capital investment into fast payback, value enhancing projects, will all drive an uplift in EBITDA margins in the next five years. And that excludes the benefit that we have from our expansion projects, such as Machala Quena or Mototolo de Brochen. Thank you for taking the time to view this video message.